Well, this is a video that is probably, uh, it's been a long time coming. This is about the Mavic Air. I get a lot of questions about this, so this is a, a review, a relatively comprehensive review. I have had this for nine months now. I've been using it pretty frequently, maybe not as much as I could have in that time, but uh, a lot of people ask me about it. My friends, I get lots of questions. Do I like it? Do I not like it? So this video is an attempt to dive in and review this device, the DJI Mavic Air. So let's get started. Kind of the first thing that, that comes up for me is when you start using it. So it's sort of unpacking and setting it up. Uh, it, it literally, it folds up super small and then it unpacks very, very quickly and easily. Then setting up the, the controller and everything. Most of the time when I'm flying, I can get set up when I say, hey, here's, here's where I'm gonna fly from. Most of the time I can probably be up in the air within like two minutes. Uh, and then changing the battery when you do need to, when you're gonna land and swap it out, it's super quick and easy. Um, you, can, you can be back in the air in 30 seconds on kind of the low side, but more like a minute. So you're, you're never out of the action very long. If, Actually, fly, taking the drone off, again, super straightforward and easy. It's literally just a little swipe on the screen. There's, there's, you touch a button and then you can swipe it and it'll take off and hover at about four feet, three to four feet uh, in the air until you tell it what to do next. And then the same with landing. landing. It's just the opposite of that. You can tap a button and then slide a little uh, slider on the screen. And no matter where it's at, even if it's 200 feet in the air, it'll go ahead and bring itself down from there. You can land it yourself and take it off yourself using the joysticks, but it's so easy to just use the on-screen controls to do that. And that's a nice, smooth, easy settling down. Uh, on to talking about the actual, like flying it. How easy is it to fly? How fun is it to fly? Super easy, super fun. I get people that ask me a lot. They go, oh, I'd be, I'd be nervous to fly it. I'd be scared. I don't know how to control it. What I tell a lot of people is I say, have you ever played uh, a PlayStation, an Xbox, uh, any game system that has two joysticks as part of the controller, which most people have. And I'm like, you would be able to figure this out very, very quickly, especially because in the default mode, if you're not touching these, the drone is not going anywhere. If it's up in the air, it will just be hovering there. Even if you're flying along and then you go, whoa, and you take your, your hands or your fingers off of the joysticks, it's gonna stop right where it's at. This thing is super fun to fly, partially because it is so easy, but it, it can cook along at some pretty quick speeds. You can do a lot of different maneuvers and actions uh, to record different videos or get different perspectives and angles for photography. I'll talk about sport mode in a little bit. Uh, that one's really, really fun to fly in because it goes quite a bit faster. But it's just, it, there's kind of a childish joy I get every time it goes up in the air and it's like, oh, look at that. Like that's, that's my little, I'm controlling that. I'm piloting it around, uh, not in a video game. Like it's a physical device that's flying around in real 3D space, which is really, really cool. Windy conditions are probably one of the biggest concerns that I typically have when flying this device and how it's gonna handle it. And it continues to blow my mind how well it handles what feel like really, really windy conditions. I haven't been flying when I know, when I have like a, a, a wind gauge, something that can actually tell me how fast the wind is actually going. But in looking at weather reports, I'm pretty sure I've been flying when it's been 10 to 15 hours sustained winds with gusts up to 20, if not more than that. And even if those 15 mile an hours or 15 mile an hour winds, this can just stay steady. Sometimes it'll be, it'll be kind of tipped over if the wind is blowing from this way it'll actually like angle itself into the wind so that it can be holding itself steady in three-dimensional space, but then keeping that camera nice and level on the gimbal to be looking at whatever it is that you're trying to, again, photo or video. Um, you can tell that it has to work harder and the battery drains significantly faster when you are flying in the wind, but that just makes sense. It literally has to fight harder to go, to keep itself in place or to fly into the wind. As for the, the noise of this device, it's spinning four propellers at a pretty high speed. I don't actually know how fast they're going, um, but when you're close to it, you can definitely hear it. It's got kind of this like, like whine. That when you're close to it would be annoying if it's sustained for very long. 
unfortunately, once you're, I've sort of seen, once you're more than kind of 50, 60, 70 feet in the air and more than 30 feet away from you, the sound is really, really diminished. You're, you're not really noticing it unless you're looking for it, especially if there's any other noise around you. If you're at the ocean and you've got the waves crashing, if you're at a park and there are just kids playing, dogs barking, if there's a little bit of a breeze even, that helps mask a lot of the sound. So for the most part, it's really not an issue unless you're flying really, really close to yourself or to other people, which you shouldn't be doing. As for the flight time, this is one of the things that is, is the issue with any drone. Uh, this one, the, the DJI I think says it's like an 18 to 20 minute flight time. I don't think I've ever gotten close to that or I don't think I've ever gotten all the way there. I usually predict that I get about 12 to 13 minutes of, of focused flight time before I really wanna bring it back because the battery's getting low. I've probably gotten 15 minutes if I'm really kind of running the battery down, but I make sure that I'm really close if if I'm doing that. But that being said, that's why I have four batteries. It's, it's really quick to change them out. And between those four, I can get very close to a full hour of actual flight time, which in most cases, if I'm trying to capture a video, is way more time than I actually need to be up in the air. It does have a slightly shorter battery life than some of the other drones that are out there. I don't think it's an issue, especially if you get a couple of batteries. Of course, the actual image and video quality for what the camera can capture. I'm not gonna go into the camera specs, but, but here's some of the footage that I've been able to capture that I'm super, super excited about a lot of this. And again, there, this device is really, really stunning for the price point that it is and the size that it is and the portability that it has. Uh, the, the, the images and the video that it can capture, I think are really, really, really incredible for for what it is like it's it's an absolutely stunning device uh, talking about some of the different modes some of the different things that this can do there are a variety of different options from the the quick shot things which has this feature called like a droney there's a boomerang um, the asteroid is probably one of the coolest ones where it goes up and takes this kind of 360 degree uh, picture and then zooms down. I don't use a lot of these because they're they're really cool and they're very fun, especially when you're first getting going and first learning this device. But for the most part, most of those other um, quick shot features and types of shots are ones that once you know how to fly it, you can capture it on your own and you can, I think, do it better. You can go a little bit farther, you could go faster, you can go slower. Uh, you can basically make it your own rather than having to fit within the, the relatively narrow parameters of these shots. The two of those modes that I do find myself using a lot, uh, not the quick shot, but the, the active track feature and then the tap fly feature. The active track one, you can select a subject on screen like yourself, another person, a, a bike, a car, and it'll, it's really good at recognizing and, and tracking that. Here's, here's kind of some of it doing it for me. And uh, I like this one. I, have, I haven't done this yet, but I really want to take this out like paddle boarding or kayaking, something on the water, because it'll just follow you and you can get it to just sort of circle above you and stay pointed at you, which I think is a really, really cool feature, especially if you're just capturing activities with you and your friends um, when you're out and about doing different activities. It's such a wonderful feature and it's really, really good at it. You see it, it, it it'll lose me here behind this tree, but then it picks me back up. Um, so, so those are really, really fun. I'm still learning and, and figuring out new fun ways to use those all the time. Uh, I definitely don't feel like I have dug super, super deep into the best ways to utilize that. So those are some fun ones that I'm even now looking to spend more time with. Uh, another feature that it is kind of a, a self-directed uh, part of, of the drone is the return to home feature. If it loses signal, if it starts to get too low on battery, there's a few other instances where it'll, it'll automatically trigger a return to home function where it will literally just like stop what it's doing. It'll turn straight back around to where it came from Go home. and it'll fly back to you, avoiding obstacles along the way if it encounters them and then it'll actually land itself which is really, really awesome. Um, it's basically a fail safe. If you get out there and the battery on the controller dies or something like that, that it loses the signal or it gets around a bend and you can't see it, which you shouldn't do, um, it'll actually stop. It'll recognize that it can't, that it's not getting a transmission signal from here. And it has the GPS Landing. coordinates that it started from saved on this actual device. And it'll be able to find its way back to you. Really, really cool feature. I use it sometimes when I'm just like, eh, like, just come on back. Like, 
I'm not trying to capture any other footage. Um, it'll bring it back and then land itself really nicely. Uh, sport mode. This is perhaps one of the most fun modes on the device because it goes really, really fast. You have to be extra careful with this because it doesn't have obstacle sensing turned on at all. Um, it takes a lot longer for it to stop or to maneuver if you're heading towards something. So I don't end up using this one a lot, but it is fun to, to kind of zip around. Uh, it's not one I use a lot. There are few instances, very few instances where in my experience, I would need that to be capturing video. Fun mode to experiment with. Make sure you're out in the open if you're doing it. You have zero obstacles around you. Um, so then just to talk about kind of the price and the value, it's still listed at, it's $799 for the kind of base package on the DJI website. I think there's some other sites like Amazon and Costco that you can get it for a little bit less than that. I would not recommend getting just the base package. I would recommend shelling out the extra $200, not a whole lot, but it is a bit, um, for the Fly More combo. That puts it the price at $999, so it's $1,000. The big thing that I think that gets you is two extra batteries. The regular base package, you only get one single battery. So you're looking at 12 to 15 minutes of actual flight time at the most. And then you're gonna have to go home and charge your battery, which isn't a big deal. But when you first get this, you're gonna wanna fly more and you're gonna get better by flying more. So if you can have a couple extra batteries to get yourself more like 40 minutes, 45 minutes of flight time when you take it out to the park or wherever, that's gonna help you learn and grow as a, as a pilot a lot faster. You also get some other perks like this extra bag and I forget what all else it comes with. I think it's well worth the fly more combo if you're thinking about getting it, but it's not absolutely necessary. Well, I kind of do feel like it's absolutely necessary. Uh, overall, yeah, so that's my, that's my review of the DJI Mavic Air. I've had this for about nine months. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Really, really powerful, incredible device. So easy to fly, so much fun, it captures fantastic video, great photos, uh, really, I think, versatile and how small it packages up. I've taken this uh, on multiple trips with me and it's so, so easy to just toss it into a backpack and you're good to go. So uh, I love it, huge fan of the Mavic Air. Please let me know what questions you have, if you have other uh, details you'd like to know or learn more about different features of this drone. Uh, or if you'd like to see some more footage. I've only included a little bit within this video, but I'm hoping to bring more of those to you in the future. So thanks for checking it out. DJI Mavic Air. Catch you next time.